Alright guys, welcome to the number lines lesson. Uh, we're going to be going over some number line questions. I want to make sure you can get these right. So I'm going to show you a couple strategies and uh, ways to approach these questions. The first thing you got to know, and, and it's really, really basic. When you go to the right on a number line, the numbers get bigger. As you go to the left, the numbers get smaller. Uh, something you can't do is you can't always assume that the tick marks are evenly spaced. Usually these problems, they're going to have to tell you that. So they'll say it you know, outright. Uh, the tick marks are equally spaced or evenly spaced. Let's take a look at an example, and I want to show you some strategies. So, this one says, on the number line above, tick marks are equally spaced. What is the value of x plus y? So I'd say this is a question I've seen pop up a few, a few different times. And something you have to be able to do is to figure out the values of these tick marks. So how do you do that? So let me, let me give you an approach. First thing you're going to do, you're going to find the total distance. That's job number one. Okay? So if we're going from 6 to 54, I'm just going to do 54 minus 6, which gives us 48. So that's our total distance. Second, second thing you're going to do, okay, you're going to count the spaces. Alright, you're not going to count, sorry, they came out a little sloppy. You're going to count the spaces. You're not going to count the tick marks. That just confuses things. So in this problem, you have one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. So we have six spaces. Step three. Divide distance by spaces. And that's going to give you the length of each space. So we want the whole thing is 48. We're dividing by our spaces. We have six of them. That means that each one measures eight. Okay? So we can use that. We'll plug that back in. If each one is eight, that's going to be six plus eight. So that's 14 plus 8, 22, plus 8, 30, 38, 46. And it works, right? Because what's 46 plus 8 brings it right back to 54. So that, that worked. That was correct. Okay. And now we have our marks. X equals 22. Y equals 46. And we'll just do 22 plus 46, grand total of 68. Okay, so that's our sum. 68 would be your answer. And if this, you know, if this was a grid in, you'd grid in 68 come test day. Uh, the main thing is, if you can follow this, these rules right here, find the total distance, count the spaces, and then you're just going to divide the distance by the spaces, you'll be fine. You're going to get these questions right. Okay, second example. And let me just line that up. All right, cool. And again, you can pause the video and you can attempt this on your own. I'm going to go into the explanation. So this one says, on the number line above, tick marks are evenly spaced. If S minus T equals negative 6, what is the value of Q minus R? So with this problem, what they didn't do, they didn't actually give us any values. The only thing they told us was that S minus T is negative 6. So what I'll suggest is you can choose some numbers and, and kind of plug them in. So I'll make it easy on myself here. We'll make S2. Alright, so 2 minus what gives me negative 6? Well, S minus T, or 2 minus 8. And that should make sense, right? 2 minus 8 gives me negative 6. So those numbers work. And I can kind of use some of the rules that I, I just showed you in the last problem. What's my total distance here? From 2 to 8 is 6, right? How many spaces? One, two, three. So each one should measure two. So that means that's going to be four, and that's going to be six. So now if I want to go back and find Q and R, I could really just count backwards. That's zero, negative two, negative four, negative six. Okay, let me just darken that in so you can see it a little bit better. All right, and now all I'm doing, I want to find Q minus R. So that's going to be negative 6 minus negative 2. We're going to keep, flip, change, grand total of negative 4. All right, choice A. 
And just to recap, the main thing here, if they don't give you numbers, choose your own numbers and plug them in. And even if you, you know, even if you pick like, maybe you made S10, uh, what would T have to be? Well, T would be 16, right? 10 minus 16 is negative 6. So it really doesn't matter what numbers you pick as long as, as the problem makes sense and it works out. All right, let's do a third one. So, so far the first two are kind of concerned with distance. I want to give you an example that really doesn't care about distance. It wants to know, uh, it's, it has more to do with number properties. We have negative things, we have fractions, what's going on? So this one says, on the number line above, which of the following could equal the product of B and C? So we'll take a look at the number line, and what do we know about B and C? They're both negative, right? So we'll write that. We're looking for the product, so B times C. It's going to be a negative times a negative. Well, we know a negative times a negative gives us a positive. Okay, so if that's the case, uh, what did I want to say? Oh, if we're looking for a positive, a is negative, right? It's between negative 2 and negative 1. So A is gone. So we're already eliminated a choice. What else can we say about B and C? Well, are they fractions? Yeah, they're fractions. Why? They're between 0 and negative 1. So they're going to be negative fractions. So what you could do, you could just uh, choose numbers for them and say that B, maybe we'll make it negative 2 thirds. And we'll say that C is negative a third. Maybe that's about right. So what do you get? Negative two-thirds times negative a third. You just multiply across. So that's going to be two-ninths. Okay. So your answer is two-ninths. Which one of these over here looks like two-ninths? Well, your closest one is D. Choice B. Right, because two-ninths is a fraction less than one. Here's your fraction less than one. And I think the real lesson here I mean, I, I know we chose numbers uh, to fill in for B and C, but you should know what happens when you multiply when you multiply fractions less than one. For example, one seventh times one third. Is it going to be greater than one or less than one? Well, a seventh times a third is one over twenty-one. So you should know when you multiply fractions less than one, you get a smaller fraction. Okay. What happens when you have fractions bigger than one? Four thirds times three halves. Again, we're going to multiply the tops. That's 12. The bottoms, 6. And 12 over 6 is the same thing as 2. All right, so when you have fractions greater than one, you get a number bigger than one. And that's kind of the lesson behind that. Uh, all right, so I hope these three questions helped you out. Uh, three different types of number line questions, but again, there's there's no real hard and fast rules uh, to these questions because uh, the test maker can ask you, you know, an infinite amount of ways. There's there's so many ways they can ask you about these things. But keep practicing, uh, keep checking out my videos, and I'm sure your SAT scores will go up. Uh, if I don't talk to you, good luck on the test.